10. And I want to make it clear, we have, we have no issue with the government of Taiwan, no we have issue with the firm that the firm involved. We have absolutely no issue. The government has no issue with them. What the government has issue with is the, the way the, the government of St. Lucia handled these affairs, which puts on due pressure on other people because of their actions. When these young actions are done, there is need for a clear path. So, the payments come directly from the contractor to the subcontractor. So OECC, they've not done one spade of work on St. Jude. Subcontractors have done that. So for the, the, the for, for, to give the impression that the work is done by OECC is not true. It is done by a subcontractor. Very important. OECC is a reputable firm. They've worked everywhere in the region, a reputable firm. But the fact is, it's not a matter of reputable, it's a matter of ensuring that the Finance Act is followed and the, and the assets of the people of St. Lucia are protected by making, making sure that there is no room, there is no room for anything improper to happen. 9. Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre and his cabinet of ministers continue to work to craft economic policies to strengthen consumer spending and ensure the retail cost of everyday goods remains affordable for the average St. Lucian household. However, consumer concerns regarding the seemingly increasing costs of sanitary products prompted the Consumer Affairs Department to conduct an investigation into VAT registered retailers. Through commercial cooperation, we have been able to obtain this data and have noted with some disappointment non-compliance in certain instances. Based on data extrapolated from the analysis conducted by our department, markups on sanitary products range from a whopping 90% to 155%, Mr. Speaker. As the government works to end period poverty, policy decisions include the eventual addition of sanitary towels, napkins, and other menstrual hygiene products on the government's designated list of priced control goods. 8. Youth parliamentarians have been given an opportunity to sharpen their skills for the upcoming youth parliament set for September 25 and 27 when they were briefed by House Speaker the Honorable Claudius Francis and Senate President Senator Alvina Reynolds. The Youth Parliament has been an annual feature from 1993 and has evolved over the years into debate of actual bills that have been brought to Parliament. Previously, they would bring their own motions to be debated. And when I became president in 2012, I thought, but if we are looking towards the youth, why not give them an actual bill that we ourselves would have debated at the, at the higher level. 7. Youth Development Assistant in the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports and founder of God's Anointed Music Ministry, GAM, Shirley Ann Cyril Mears, organized a back-to-school concert on the Derrick Walker Square last week to offer the school population some inspiration as they headed back to school at the start of a new academic year. Six. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development joined the rest of the region in commemorating Caribbean Wellness Day as they collaborated with the Ministry of Health and Wellness and the Taiwan Technical Mission to host a farmer's market that not only showcased the offerings of the agriculture sector but also focused on the nutritional benefits of local purchasing. The farmer's market held at Constitution Park in Castries brought together a diverse array of individuals, including 40 youth ambassadors from Taiwan, as well as local farmers, entrepreneurs, and consumers, creating an atmosphere of unity and sustainability within the agriculture sector. 5. An early warning system supports public health and security. 
by providing a rapid response to the adverse changes in the drug phenomenon, thereby minimizing the risk associated with it. A national early warning system would allow for maintaining a surveillance system that includes information from multiple sources such as epidemiology, public health, forensic experts, national security and border agencies, and community-based agencies. Four. Okay will benefit from financial support from the St. Lucia Social Development Fund or SSDF which has once again partnered with the Department of Education, Innovation and Vocational Training to fund its students' intervention program known as the Post-Primary Alternative Pathway or PAP. New participants in the program were presented with laptop computers to ensure they have the tools necessary to take advantage of the program's emphasis on unique instruction. Because the program falls in line with the mandate of the SSDF, which is to provide opportunity to the most vulnerable people in our society to improve the quality of life. Three. World Patient Safety Day will be observed on 17 September 2023 under the theme Engaging Patients for Patient Safety. Patient Safety Day serves as a reminder of the collective responsibility to create a culture of safety within the healthcare system. Two. On September 10th, the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs joined with the World Health Organization in recognizing and supporting World Suicide Prevention Day under the theme Creating Hope Through Action. This theme has been in use from 2021 to 2023 as a call for action for stronger decision-making practices and an understanding that our actions can inspire hope and increase measures that prevent suicide. One. Ladies and gentlemen, today on the International Day for the Preservation of the Ozone Layer, or World Ozone Day 2023, we come together to celebrate a remarkable milestone. Today, we can proudly say that this collective effort has borne fruit as we witness the gradual recovery of the ozone layer thanks to the phase-out of almost all ODSs at the global level. Thank you.